and ask you guys to join with us uh, to pray. And are we, are we done with this? We a lot, how much longer? I don't want to, like, disrupt their game. They found it. Okay, kids, can I ask you guys to stand up and grab hands, all right? Did someone say awkward? It's okay, guys. I promise they don't have cooties. And I'm going to ask you guys as well if you'll join me, if you'll stand and grab the hands of those next to you. Where's Jasper? Hey, buddy, we come up here, bud? So I got someone's hand to hold. I mentioned at the beginning of service today that we are joining with churches all across the earth praying for victims of abuse. And I know that abuse is not something that um, is much talked about in churches, and that's the reason we're talking about it, because we know that in a church this size, and as your pastor and the people I talk with on a weekly basis, I know that we are not an exception at this church, that there are people who have been abused or maybe have been uh, abusive to others. And the whole point of praying together and joining with the 8 million plus people around the world that are praying is we believe that God is the ultimate healer, God is the ultimate sustainer, God is the ultimate comforter, and God brings justice where justice needs to be brought. And so this morning, we're going to take just a minute to pray. So if you'll grab the hand of the person next to you and bow your head and close your eyes around this room. Just want to remind you as we begin praying this morning that you are holding the hand of a person who is so loved by God. You may not know their story. You may not know what they went through this week to get them here, but they are so loved by a loving, good, good father. And so as we begin to pray, I want to invite you to start praying for the person on your left and your right because you don't know their story. You don't know if they have been the victim of abuse or maybe they've used that hand you're holding to hurt someone else. The book of James says that out of the same mouth cannot come both praising and cursing. I think it goes the same for our hands. We use our hands to lift and worship, and then some of us use those hands to hurt others. We're not here to condemn this morning. We're just here to say, if that's something you've struggled with, God can give you the strength to have the self-control to stop. And then if you're here this morning and you would say, I've been a person who was abused in whatever way that was for you. I don't know if it was emotionally or physically or sexually or spiritually, psychologically. I don't know what you faced, but I know that the God that we talked about during communion by his stripes, we are healed, has come to set you free. And so this morning, we're going to join our faith together, believing against abuse in this world. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. God, I ask that every single person under the sound of my voice, whether they're here in this auditorium or listening online or or watching on live stream, God, that they would know that you love them beyond what any human could ever love, that they would know that any uh, ill that's been done to them, any abuse that's been poured onto them, any hand that has, has not been used to love them but to abuse them or a voice that's been used to abuse them, God, would you let them know this morning that that is not of you, God? that you are a God of love and not a God of wrath, that you are a God of hope and not a God of devastation, that you come to heal and to set free and deliver, God. And I pray this morning for every single person under the sound of my voice that has faced abuse in anywhere in their life, God, would you let them right now receive a touch from you, God? Would you pour your Holy Spirit over them? Would you Would you grab them, God? Would you hug them so deep with your love this morning so that they know that, Lord, you are there to comfort them and to heal them, God? That the scars that they may have can be used to heal others in the future, God. But I just speak healing over every single person in this place that has faced abuse, God. Would you touch them from the inside out? Would you heal them? And would you make the crooked places in their life straight? Would you begin to speak to their hearts and to their minds to let them know that no words that have been spoke against them are true except your word. And then, Father, I pray for those here who would say, you know what, at times in my life I've been abusive to somebody else. I pray, Father, that you would forgive us in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that your word says that by your stripes we are healed. And Lord, your blood was poured out for the forgiveness and the remission of our sins, God. And so this morning, those of us who are repenting right now, we receive your forgiveness. We pray that you would wash us clean by your blood, God. That your Holy Spirit would convict us anywhere in our life that we have hurt someone else, God. But that we would lay down our lives that we would have such a humility that we would never choose our selfish motives over someone else, God. And really, that's the root of abuse. 
is choosing what I want over your best. So I pray this morning, Jesus, that you would give us the strength to always choose the best for others, to use our hands and our mouth and our feet to love and not to pull down, God, to build and not to destroy. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for even as we're praying, the people you're speaking to, the people that you're forgiving, the people you're loving on, God, let this moment be a moment where they leave here today and know they have been touched by God, the God who is love, and that love transforms everything. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Awesome. Thank you, guys. If you will join with me in welcoming Miss Erica to come and speak to us this morning, you can have a seat. Thanks for being here today. Love you guys. You can just leave them there. It's fine. I don't know why I whispered. You guys could hear it. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah. Good morning, everybody. That's so much better. Um, thank you guys for letting them play their game. Um, I know I didn't plan for you all to be like sitting back down by the time they got to your pew, so sorry about that. Um, but if you've ever heard me talk before, you know how important the word is to me and to um, how much I want kids to think church is fun. Um, so that way when they grow up and people tell them it's boring, they can be like, uh uh, this is why. Um, so that's what they were doing is they were having a memory verse relay and they were putting them together. And I love that some people are so diligent. <clears throat> Drayden over there is not going to get up till it's perfect. And I actually love that about him. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to do something just really special and fun. And DJ didn't know I was doing this, so sorry. But <clears throat> not really. Um, <laughs> One of the boys who's been coming to our church for as long as I can remember, and he's really started when he was little. And now, Malachi, can you come up here? How old are you now? He's 11. And last week, he brought me these two poems that he wrote for school. Now, I want to point out that he doesn't go to a Christian school. So he, um, of his own will, got assigned to poetry and he decided to write about God, and they're beautiful. And so I figure, um, as the church body and as his family, we should hear him, and we should let him know how proud of him we are, because it's pretty awesome. You want me to go first? Okay. He, he wrote two, but he wants me to read one of them, and then he'll read the other one. So this one's called The Holy Spirit. Now remember, let's not be all theological with this poem, okay? Say I'm 11. Right? <clears throat> okay. This is called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our best friend. It is the Holy Spirit. They keep us company and also love us to death. The Holy Spirit is a ghost, kind of, but not a scary one, and also loves us to death. They will stay by our side and never leave. <clears throat> a ghost, kind of, but not a scary one. So never be scared of them because they will stay by our side and never leave and will give us some of the best memories, even through rough times. So never be scared of them because they keep us company and they will give us some of the best memories even through rough times. They are our best friend. You can just go ahead and read that one. Our Holy Savior is bright and, and he has sadly died for our sins. He is the brightest light. His, his death gave us a, a, us a lot of wins. He, he brings the sun and brings the dark the dark nights. Because of his death, we won. He is our bravest knight. He keeps us in our head. He keeps to us in our head and listens to us pray. And even though he is dead, he still says hooray. Malachi, you got a standing ovation. I don't know if you saw that or not. <clears throat> so yeah, his theology may not have been right on. Like DJ said, please don't send me an email. <clears throat> but the spirit and the intent behind that was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And so I'm so proud of him. Um, 
So, I'm supposed to be the fun speaker. <clears throat> and DJ's like, can you talk about abuse? It's Blue Sunday. And at first I was like, sure, you know, I can, I can talk about that. That's going to be easy. <clears throat> and then as time got closer and closer, I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do this anymore. <clears throat> this is really hard. This is really heavy. And I was sick about it all week. And then the really cool thing is DJ's prayer pretty much covered it. So, like, I don't really have to talk about that part anymore. At least I don't feel like I do. But I do. It's pretty cool. It's like five pages of my notes. I don't even have to look at anymore. It's such a relief. Um, seriously, ask my husband. I have been sick all week about it. <clears throat> I mean, how am I supposed to talk about something so heavy without dishonoring it? <clears throat> so, here's what I do want to say. If you have ever been abused... I want you to know how much God loves you and that it was never your fault. And if you're a little kid right now and people are saying horrible things to you, the people in your life who are supposed to keep you safe, they don't mean it. You're not those things. And they do love you. They just are a little bit broken on the inside still. And so every kid in here today, I just want you to know how much I love you and how proud of you I am because... Um, the whole idea behind God's house is that we're a family and that downstairs we're a family and upstairs we're a family. And the reason that we're pulling us all together is so that we can be one big family. <clears throat> and watching the men pray for Dave, I'm usually not sappy, just for the record. Um, I'm the anti-sappy. was really, really beautiful. And um, that's what a family's supposed to do. And then the kids got up, and they have no idea what's going on. And half of the little boys were crying because they felt the pain of someone in their family. And that's just so beautiful and perfectly ties up with what we've been talking about downstairs. So thank you, Jesus. So downstairs, we've been talking about humility. <clears throat> and humility is letting go of what you think you deserve and putting others before yourself. Personally, I think it probably took some bravery and some courage for them to come up and pray. And they have no idea why they're praying. They didn't get asked to pray. But slowly and surely, they just did. And what they did was what they've learned. They let go of their, what they deserved was safety. They let go of that and said, he's hurting, let me pray for him. <clears throat> and so I think that's beautiful. And now I have to like regather some of my thoughts. <clears throat> so I think what I'm going to do here is <clears throat> I'm going to tell you guys how when I was praying about what to say and what to do and I couldn't figure it out and I like did this really cool app with Megan called Marco Polo, and she was trying to help me and, like, pick your favorite point from each page, and I'm like, there's too many, and blah, 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 and I was overwhelmed, and so I just started writing to God, and that's sometimes my clearest way of hearing from God, and afterwards, I was like, oh, I'm supposed to just say that little part, so can I be, like, really vulnerable for just, like, 30 seconds? Okay, can I trust you with my vulnerability? Maybe? I know, I'm a little nervous about this. Oh, I don't like to be vulnerable. Okay, so <clears throat> I said to this letter to God, I could be really harsh, and I could throw down some Bible verses that would convict us all. And honestly, there's a part of me that really wants to. I know I won't, though, because I want to be like you. And you teach the truth through love. And that's what I want for people, to hear the truth. But I also want them to have hope because you love them and you offer them a way out. I don't want to talk about abuse. The very word makes me sick in my spirit. It's an act so far away from who you are and what you want from us and for us that my spirit recoils at the word. But I know it's happening and the church is not exempt. There are people in sitting in pews who hit their children out of anger, who yell at them, who cuss them out, all while crushing their sweet spirits and pushing them down so that they can feel better for a moment, a release of stress, 
of anger, of frustration, or disappointment. Putting their inadequacies as a parent on their children. It's easier to yell and punish than to try and understand their children and what's going on. It's easier to expect perfection rather than swallow our pride and ask for help. Not worrying what others around us think of their behavior. My heart aches for those children, God. But I also know that your heart aches for those adults as well. And that's where it was real hard for me. <clears throat> because I'm being honest. I know people only know what they know. And they don't know what they don't know. It's unfair for me to have such expectations when people don't know everything I know. Because I only know what I know from you. Help me, Holy Spirit, to use your words and your wisdom to show people a new path, a new way of being, and a new way to love their children. And what was hard for me is I don't want to diminish any adult who's ever been abused. I don't want to minimize what anyone's been through. But I love kids. And that's what I'm called to. So I don't, I don't honestly know how to speak to that other than say I'm really sorry and that God can redeem anything. But what I do know is how to stop and how to help you understand what actually is abuse to your children and how to stop doing it. Because that's what God has equipped me with. It's really hard to step into something and say, I know how to do that, but I do. I do know how to do that. If you could get a doctorate in parenting knowledge, I'd have one. I've read every book, every study. I've read everything you could possibly read. And the Holy Spirit's my best friend, so I think I'm covered. <clears throat> but what was, what's hard is, I promise I won't take a long time, um, it's really hard to say that it's abuse when you cuss your kids out. But it is. Because the word abuse is a verb and a noun. And anything that causes ill treatment is abuse. Anything that causes harm is abuse. We want to use that word and save it for those people whose lives have been seriously traumatized. And I don't want to take away from what that is, but I also want us to understand that if I cuss my son out, that's abuse. If I tell him what's wrong with you because they messed up, that's abuse. Some of you have heard my story before about Ryan and how we get to the restaurant and she's still not ready in the car and I look back there and she's like no shoes on and no hair done and I'm like, what have you been doing for 10 minutes? And immediately the Holy Spirit quickened me and by the time she comes around the car, I was like, Ryan, I'm really sorry that I acted like that. You can take as long as you need. <clears throat> because what was on the verge of happening was abuse. Spiritual, emotional abuse. I was minimizing who she is instead of asking her why she was taking so long. Her answer, I was looking out the window. <laughs> that actually makes sense. She wasn't being disobedient. She wasn't trying to not listen to her mother. She got caught up in looking out the window. She's 10. <clears throat> Humility was letting go of what you think you deserve and putting others before yourself. And I think as parents... We think that we're being humble because we already give up a lot for our kids. We already pretty much do everything we do for them. But you had them, that's your responsibility. Suck that one up. <clears throat> Nobody made you have the baby. You had the baby. Be a good parent. So I can't let you off the hook thinking that's humility and putting others first. I just can't. That's not fair because it's not honest. And um, whether I like it or not, the Holy Spirit makes me tell the truth. 
Believe me, it'd be a lot easier to not. But it becomes very easy to say, well, I already did this for them today, so now it's my turn. Now again, please hear my heart in this and that I'm not saying anyone should be a doormat or that their children should run their lives, okay? Keep everything in balance. <laughs> but how many times as parents have we been frustrated and we just yell at them because we're frustrated? I know I've done it. I'm sure everyone in here has. I think if we all look around, can we all agree that we're all guilty of these things? Okay, so nobody has to feel like they're the outcast. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> but I've spent 14 years trying to figure out how to not do that. Right? I've spent 14 years trying to figure out how to live with humility. And here's, here's what God told me after my lovely, sweet prayer where I told him I wanted to be mean. But, you know, that's not how he is, so I can't be that way. Of course, now I can't find my Bible verse, my 32,000 pages of notes. Romans 12, 2. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Okay, so some of us will say, well, that's how I grew up. That's how my mom disciplined me, and I turned out all right. I'm going to do the same thing. Or, I don't do anything any different than anyone else. Uh, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Changing the way you think means you have to do something. Then you will know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. If you've heard me ever speak before, you know how much... I love the word, and I think every answer is in the word. <clears throat> and so I think if we're sitting here saying, we want to be really good parents, and if we admit what abuse really is, <clears throat> and we don't want to do that anymore, we want to treat them like the wonderful, amazing resources they are, because they are. And remember, someday some of them are probably going to change your diapers, so you might want to be a little bit nicer. <laughs> um, he says to... Change the way you think. There's only one way to change the way you think. You have to learn something new. You have to learn something new, which requires work on your part. Now, here's the really cool thing. You don't have to be like me and love information and think if you could go to school for the rest of your life, you would, because there's this thing called the internet. And Google should be your best friend. Because if you just type in, like, learning behavior, or my child won't stop yelling, or, I mean, all of these things will come up, and that's a start. That's one easy place to do it. But the other way, which is really simple and which is so biblical, is ask your family. We proved earlier we're a family, right? So just like we model downstairs for the kids how to praise, and that's what we do up here, find somebody in your family who's a good parent. Find somebody around you who you honor, who you respect, who has good kids, who you've never seen cuss them out, and say, hey, can you help me with this? Ask for help. None of us are walking this road alone, and none of us are getting it 100% right. My own kids will call me out on stuff when they see me doing it, which is what I want. If I find myself getting upset, they'll stop me. And now, because I said this, they're going to be like, Mom, you're abusing us. <laughs> which is good because it's the truth. So I would just ask that you guys Really think about what you do on a daily basis with your children. Really think about what your interactions are. Really ask yourself if they're about you or if they're about them. Are you yelling at them because they really didn't do something or are you yelling at them because you had a really bad day? Either way, yelling at them's abuse. Love me, hate me for it, it's the truth. And tell DJ, not me. So. 
I just want to pray for you guys before we finish up. And I know this one wasn't necessarily fun, but it's what you got. So let's bow our heads and pray. And why do we do that, guys? I want you guys to repeat after me today, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for adopting us into your family where you are an amazing father and abuse isn't in your vocabulary. And all you want for us is a life full of love, safety, and joy, and freedom. Help me to know my inadequacies as a parent, as a spouse, as an employee, and as a member of this family. I recognize, God, that nothing in my life ever change until I first acknowledge it and place it on the altar to you. Please send me resources and people and speak creative ideas into my heart so that I can be verse that I don't I don't like the wording of it so I'm not going to read it but I want to give you the gist of it which is basically the more time we spend with God the more he changes us and then we reflect his glory so the more time I spend with him the more that I look like him the more that I behave like him so if you're struggling in any area I encourage you before you yell pray before you snap pray Before you punish, pray. And sometimes our children deserve discipline, but not punishment because they're not bad. So before you discipline, pray. I have been on my knees before asking God to tell me how to punish, not punish, discipline, because one of my children was lying to me consistently. How do you stop that? I don't know. I'm a human being. I used to lie too. But God knew how to deal with it. God knew how to talk to that child and God knew what to tell me to do. I don't remember what we did because it wasn't me. But that daughter, oops. So sorry. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. She was littler. She doesn't do it anymore. (laughs) That daughter of mine now is the most honest person you will meet. She'll look you dead in the eye and go, I want to lie because it would be easier, but I'm not going to. I couldn't teach her that. There's no way as a human being I could have instilled that in her. That's because I asked my father what to do. And he told me what to do. And now she knows what to do. And when she grows up and has kids, she can't teach her kids how not to lie. But she knows that, hey, my mom looks to God, so now I'm going to look to God. And I could just keep talking because I love children so much and I think that we do them such a disservice. But I won't. (laughs) Thank you guys for listening to me. Thank you, DJ, for taking the pressure of the abuse off. (laughs) And to all my wonderful babies, and yes, I call them babies, and wherever Adam McGruder is today, he's proof that I still think they're babies. Because I walked up to him today and I was like, come eat some muffins. And I was like, ooh, I just little boy to you. But I used to be taller than him. So he's always going to be a little boy to me. So yes, I call them all my babies. But I love you all so much. I'm so proud of who you are. God is so proud of who you are. Every person in this church is for you. And they're so proud of who you are. So always know that you're safe here, that you're loved here. And that... We all just want what's best for you. Thank you, guys.
Wow, that was awesome. Awesome, awesome. Good job, Erica. I appreciate it. Um, I was very engaged, even for me, because I don't have kids, but I work with kids. So um, I was just very encouraged by, you know, praying before, you know, I discipline or talk to a kid about something that I feel like they may be doing wrong. So I just want to encourage everyone that have parent, that have kids or will have kids in the future, just, just get in books, read scripture, and uh, you'll find answers in there. And also, most importantly, come to God and pray to God about your answers. Awesome, Trey. Appreciate that. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for um, just coming and, and celebrating with us and, and stepping in this door opportunity uh, just to learn and grow um, as a family. So thank you so much. If you would stand on your feet, and we are going to confess the blessing. If you do need prayer for anything, um, there are going to be people down here that will pray with you. But let's confess the blessing um, that our best and most blessed days are ahead of us.